back to the Pretty Normal Me vlog. I'm Em Clarkson and I'm really excited because today we have an extra special vlog because mm. I'm not the only one in it. Yes. Um, this is Tash Bishop, who is the founder of The Pants Project, which is a campaign that I am literally beyond excited about and I'm really, 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 really excited to be sharing it all with you guys. Um, Tash is, we've been chatting for about an hour and a half and I have deemed her to be one of the most inspirational people that I've ever met. So we, <laughs> we are going to talk a little bit about her story and the Pants Project and what it is and most importantly what you guys can do to get involved. So basically I was diagnosed with um, a condition called MRPH which has a really long name which is Maya Rokitansky Kuster Hauser Syndrome and <laughs> quite a mouthful. Catchy one. <laughs> um, and uh, it's basically a syndrome that means you're born without a womb or uterus, however you want to say it. I found out about it when I was 16 um, and the reason I found out is basically I never had a period. So lots of doctor's appointments later I found out that there is actually nothing there <laughs> inside me. Um, which obviously was quite a shock um, and took me a few years to kind of come to terms with it. I came up with this idea that pants could be extremely powerful um, and it was when I was having treatment in hospital that enabled me to be able to have sex, which is another dynamic of this, that uh, my nurse told me that the most um, important thing a woman can have is a pair of pants that makes her feel a million bucks. Um, so I went out and bought myself a pair of pants and it really, really helped. So I thought, why not turn this into a project that can make any woman feel like that. Long story short, we are a non-profit organisation that sells lingerie, be it via our online collection, which I think we're going to link below. Hell, yes, <laughs> we're going to link it below. <laughs> you have two online designers and you buy your pants and then 20% uh, of the profits go towards Fertility Network UK um, and they help lots and lots of people struggling with infertility, whether it's support or funding or IVF treatment, anything. Um, so we donate our profits to them. Will you explain in a little, if you can, mm -hmm. a little bit more detail, like the, so you were 16 when you found out yeah. that you had this condition, yeah. and you said to me earlier about the kind of finding out so young yeah. that you wouldn't be able to necessarily have children yeah. naturally, mm -hmm. um, but that there was no support network yeah. for you. So. Yeah. That I think is a massive part of what you're doing is yes. trying to find people to support. Yeah. Or charities that yeah, can yeah. support. Yeah, so like definitely I think at that age, obviously there's so much going on when you're 16, regardless of whether you have a huge part of who you are as a woman missing. I found that support really hard to find. Like when, when you're 16 and you're suddenly told that something you thought was going to be a really normal thing to have, like everyone thinks, you know go to school, you go to university, you get a job, you marry, you have children. Like everyone kind yeah. of has that white paper. Well that's idea. the other thing you said to me earlier was the huge pressure around children on women, whether it's to have children, well whether it's to have them, whether it's like you say, mm -hmm. to have the picket fence and the babies, or if it's to not have them mm -hmm. because you should be putting your career first. Yeah. But either way, children are a huge part of a woman's predicted life isn't yeah it? it's the yeah, expectation yeah. that we're gonna have babies yeah, at some maybe. point yeah so yeah there's a sti stigma yeah I would, it, say, yeah, I would down. say so like I think the st because the stigma is such a huge part of it and whether you're an independent woman because you don't have kids and it's like a career choice or whether you have kids and that makes you a woman that's not really the point yeah the point is that everyone deserves that choice yeah as whether you have kids or not everyone it's like a hum fundamental human right, I believe, um, for a woman to choose whether she can have children or not. Yeah. So to be told that I can't, that was like a no. <laughs> and that, because that's the other thing, is it does make you feel, for whatever reason, I imagine, like... Slightly you, impartial. Yeah, like yeah. less of a woman. <clears throat> yeah, completely. Somehow. And, and that, you were saying that about your hospital time yeah. as well, mm -hmm. about the, the time that you spent yeah. having the treatment to be able to. yeah to be able to have sex yeah because that's another thing that you just I would you probably before this you just assume it or anyone watching probably just assumes there's something that we can all do yeah um, and it's, that yeah it's kind of like it's like a rite of passage I think everyone is gonna lose their virginity I imagine yeah. at some stage yeah. and um, to be told that that's not gonna happen that's not gonna happen naturally, you know. So when, when you're born, you're born with a, like a 
a cluster of cells and then as you grow in the womb your whole body develops and it develops downwards so for me no uterus developed and neither did an internal vagina so everything looks very normal on the outside well because that's um, the other question is i think that the common question maybe with a condition like this would be how did you not notice yeah and this is something we were saying yeah. before and i really want to ask to go back to the story of her time in hospital and the, con the treatment that she had but we were saying earlier was um, anyone who watches uh, has watched the videos or what, read the blog before will know that we've worked with the Eva Peer, which is a gynecological cancer charity awareness awareness charity. Too many words, I've got them twisted. Mm -hmm. um, a huge part of their campaign last year was know your normal, and the fact is, is what I said to you mm -hmm. earlier. If a man's got something wrong with his bits, he's going to know about it yeah. because everyone knows what a like dick and balls looks like. Yeah. You know, everyone knows. But I tried, and I did this last year, and I think I did it in a video where I tried to draw a vagina. Mm. I could not draw a... I have yeah. one. I've had one for 22 years, yeah. and I can't draw one. Yeah. So I suppose, like, I mean, I, I know it, it is different in, in terms of what you had, but I think the fact that, on a, on a side tangent, that yeah. a condition like this can exist where you wouldn't be expected to know because yeah. you never see anyone else's. Mm. There's a, there is a huge stigma around talking vaginas and yeah we're not completely. literally ones that talk yeah. but like, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> around, like talking about vaginas like we just don't yeah. do it and mm. we don't know you know that you only ever see diagrams right yeah yeah completely so, and that's so dehumanizing um and like that leads on quite well to like my treatment in hospital which i found even though I was in an amazing hospital, so I was um, treated at, who, anyone else watching this who has MLPH, you must go to the Queen Charlotte's if you're in London or if you're in the UK. They're amazing and they have amazing nurses and they specialise in MLPH. Um, and that's where I got referred to because I'd gone through so many doctors that ha didn't have a clue what MLPH was. People had to Wikipedia what was wrong with me. Just what you want from your um, doctor. Let exactly. me just Google it for you. Let me just Google like, um, so yeah, that was quite depressing, and then eventually got referred to the Queen Charlotte's, and that's when I had my treatment. But obviously when I was told at 16, you, in order to have the treatment, um, you have to be having sex, because your vagina, like any other muscle in your body, is going to shrink and stretch. So um, I basically had to have a boyfriend or be in a relationship where I was going to be having sex. That is um, the most clinical, it's so sad, I know. it's just the most clinical thing. Yeah, um, so I very, very luckily found that kind of makes sense. <laughs> just like you went out and out. <laughs> um, I tuned you. <laughs> um, it wasn't quite like that, it was but just very lucky fate happened to intervene and I found an amazing person. Some people with MRKH, it really depends, like with every body, every single body is different, every single vagina is different, obviously. Um, and some people have an operation, some people don't, some places they don't do operations, but everyone has dilation. So um, the long and short of it is, it basically looks like a deodorant can, is a nice way of putting it. So there we go. I found this one yeah. earlier. <laughs> Here we go. So it kind of looks a bit like that. So you sit every day. I sat every day with amazing nurse, Nula. Um, it looks just like Sharon Osborne. <laughs> I sat for three or four hours a day, morning, middle of the day and night and you grow from a uh, dilator about this size to about this size <laughs> um, and you have to do that every day for about two months and you do it until you're comfortable with it and yeah. I do. Um, <laughs> it's still hard for me to talk about, how ridiculous is that, everyone has sex. <laughs> yeah. Um, and but that's it, you, you, you were saying earlier, you kind of lose your you lose any sense you of the romance my, as well yeah. though. You lose and, the yeah. know, joy to be with it. Yeah, yeah, very, completely. Like, and it well, can be painfully clinical. <laughs> so <laughs> my uh, boyfriend lives in France. Um, so when I went to go see him for quite an important occasion, <laughs> obviously my whole family knew about it and everyone I know knew about it and it was such a big deal for pretty much every well I, in my head I thought it was such a big deal for me it was a big deal you know most people lose their virginity probably at a party or I don't know with whoever they're with and yeah. it's 
a quiet private affair yeah and nothing about this was private for me and in like in some ways that has that beauty because now I feel so comfortable talking about it and I think it is something so important to be talked about you know there's I've been added to, to groups on Facebook with thousands of women who have um, MRKH and yeah. who find it impossible to talk about because there's so much stigma around talking about vaginas and something that is you know, 50% of the world has one. More than 50%. More than 50%. It, this is what I would say. This is the one thing you've got in common with all of your girlfriends. Mm. It, this is the one you can all have different everything else. Yeah. But it boils down to something that we still won't talk about. Yeah. We talk about everything. Mm. And it comes to your vagina and you're like, mm, mm, mm. like, no, I don't want to do yeah. that. And it's really weird. Part of the reason I'm doing this project is because I want, I want to like end that stigma. I want people to start talking about like vaginas because it's such... A normal thing, you know, and and no matter whether you have MRKH or you happen to be infertile, anything like that, no matter what's wrong or not wrong with your body, everyone has insecurities about their body, and I can't think of a single one of my girlfriends who was completely fine about having sex and completely fine about their vagina. I'm sure everyone has hang-ups and stuff, mm. but no one talks about it, and I think that's so damaging to young girls. It's hard growing up. You don't need yeah. another element to kind of get in the way yeah. of that and wear that so confidence. your future now mm. in terms of you've got the pants project you're going yeah. to be doing yeah um and then you've got potentially because you don't want babies now no and you're too, <laughs> Not a baby. too young for babies now <laughs> um but eventually you're gonna become an age yeah. where you may want children mm. and do you know what that future is going to be for you now i you know Funnily enough, I it's still quite grey, it's a grey area for me, you know. Um, you might have seen in the news about um, uterine transplants, it's still very, very early days. Things are still, you know, technology is amazing, science is developing incredible leaps and bounds every year. But there are people who are told, you know, uterine transplants are still not possible, it's not going to happen for a, like a number of years. And I think that's really hard. And obviously you have to factor in the money side of things, you know, IVF treatment is so expensive. Yeah, well that's the other um, thing, isn't it? Is it often, mm. you know, people just can't afford that at yeah. all, so. So that's, and that's the fundamental aim for me at the moment with the Pants Project is I want to I wanna raise money because I think I want to enable as many people as possible to have that choice to be able to say, yes, I want kids, I want to try IVF, yeah. even if I, I can't think afford it. I might be wrong, but I think around IVF is about £5,000, yeah. isn't it? Which yeah. is enough to break yeah, and that's people's life savings. Yeah. And know? that's one round, and often exactly. it doesn't work until yeah. the third, maybe. Yeah. So, and if it does then, so that's mm. a, that's enough for a deposit on a house, really, by yeah. the time you've done three rounds. Yeah. So that would be your aim, would be to raise money for people who, who can't yeah. afford IVF on their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I say, I rang my mum yesterday, because I've been really excited about meeting Tash, and I rang her yesterday, and I said, um, literally like hopping with excitement because I'm gonna talk and I'd seen the pants project and we've been emailing for a few weeks and I've been really excited and she honestly I was telling her Tash's story of what or what little I knew of it and both of us were sitting there like goosebumped out and mum sort of like oh my god I can't believe it like how has she done this much and she's only 19 and it's true I mean I'm sure you had to grow up incredibly quickly being given a diagnosis that really is a, that Obviously, you're an adult by the yeah. time that the issues are going to come into play. Yeah. If that makes you yeah. know, a huge. Yeah, completely. So I'm sure you really did have to grow up really quickly, but I think you mustn't forget, and I'm sure these guys will agree with me, that you incredibly inspirational oh, to do what you're doing. That's so lovely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really, really excited that Pretty Normal Me, we've been able to do this video. Yeah. Um, and I really would beg you guys, I'm going to leave the link, like, obviously, mm. in the description box to um, the Pants Project website. I think on the back of what you've said, I'm going to go and buy myself a pair of pants this mm. afternoon. I think all of you should go and buy yourself a pair of pants this afternoon because they're not only helping yourself to feel more confident, which is dreamy. It really does it's, work. Yeah, it, it, it put on totally a pair of pants, works. You will feel amazing. Yeah, pants. but the other thing that you're doing and you can actually remember is you will be directly helping. I mean, this is this will hopefully become... Tasha's life and I'm sure it will and you've got enough passion and you've got an incredible thing that you want to do but it does need support and 
we're basically win-win because we're going to yeah. be helping great causes. We're going to get be... a pair of pants. Yeah, exactly, and we're going to get a pair of pants. So I think I would beg of you guys. I don't care that your budgets are tight after Christmas or they're, your they're waistbands not, they're not are too a bit tight yeah. after Christmas. <laughs> That'll probably be the main good thing. Um, but yeah, they're not. They're, of course, they're not. Yeah, they're not. Expensive. They're not crazy expensive. But also, we are having a. Um, a pants party, a Valentine's pants party. <laughs> well, um, to the pants party. <laughs> yeah. um, on on Valentine's Day, funnily enough. And it will be in London and we'll be um, releasing a select amount of tickets on our Facebook page. So if you go and like our Facebook page, plug. Go, go and like our Facebook page, that'll be in the link below as well. Um, then you can get a hold of a ticket, hopefully, um, to come to that. And that would be really cool to meet some of you guys. Perfect. So we're going to have that. I will be sharing, if anyone's following, I obviously hope by the end of this video you'll also be following The Pants Project on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram's the best, their game's really strong. <laughs> so um, go and find them there so you can keep up. But I will also make this pledge that I will help and support um, this amazing campaign in any way I can. So if you keep an eye on our Twitter as well, obviously I will be sharing everything as and when it comes out. Um, and I think all that's left to do is basically say a massive thank you to Tash for coming on to the channel and no, a thank huge, you. No, just and thank you actually for inspiring me and for doing a really great thing. Thank because you. Because you're you're pretty great. So are you. You're a pretty great girl. <laughs> what girls just yeah. that. Oh, we're just so great. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've had a bit of a ego boost, both of us now, so we can like retire. <laughs> um, but basically, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that something that's been said today has resonated with you. I'm sure it will have done. Um, like I say, come find um, the pants. The, 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 the pants project on uh, various social media channels all the links will be below please buy yourself a pair of pants and send us both a photo when you get them yeah you i don't want have to see to be, your pants yeah well I was gonna say, you don't have to be in them but we'd kind of love it if you yeah. were in them because you're doing a great thing you're loving your body and you're helping a great cause so um buy some pants basically uh, <laughs> links below and I'm, I'm gonna order mine this afternoon and i will <laughs> let you guys know as soon as they arrive um but basically all i have to say is thank you so thank much you and too. you will be seeing so much more time around green or me like i'm never letting this girl go so guys <laughs> please subscribe thank you so much for watching um take care and i will see you on tuesday with a new video bye Lots of love bye